Hey, Bridge Kids, it's Miss Sarah, and today is our No Sew Bandana Pillow Program. So the first thing you need to do is grab your bandana pillows. If you have a ruler, you can grab one, otherwise we can just estimate. And you need some scissors. Use actual scissors, not like the smaller kid scissors, because we need something really good to cut through the fabric. So I'm going to tilt you down like I do in a lot of our programs so you can see what my hands are doing, but you'll still hear me talk. Okay. So I have my two bandanas and I have them laying on top of each other with, you'll see on one side, your pattern is a darker black. And on the inside, if you can tell, it's not as dark. The side that's not as dark, you want both of the not dark sides touching. And then lay them as close as you can get edge to edge right on top of each other. So the first thing we need to do is we're gonna cut out fringes all the way around. So our fringes, if you do have a ruler, need to be about six centimeters long. But if you don't have a ruler, that brings us to about the this line, the inner, you have like a box framing, and there's one on the outside, then there's these fun dot shapes, and there's an inner square. That's how long our cuts need to be. So you're gonna cut your fabric from the bottom and cut your two bandanas together so that way they line up. And it might take a couple of snips to get yourself all the way to that line. But once you're at that line, you can stop. And I want you to now we need to make another one. So if you do have a ruler, grab it and you want it to be about two and a half centimeters. So for mine, that's just about one, two, three of these dots. And I'm going to snip again. And once you do the first one, it'll be easier to just eyeball the rest of them. So little snips, don't go too fast because you don't want your bandanas to slide off track right up to that inner line. And now I have one fringe. So now that you have your first fringe, you're gonna keep going all the way around your bandana. Before I speed myself up though, we do need to cut out a piece from the corner so that when we're time we're ready to make our pillow, we get a good corner. So after you cut all the way up, I want you to take your knife and cut over on your corner and cut it all the way off. Just like that. And it's okay if your edges are a little raggedy. After we tie all of it, because eventually we're gonna tie it together, you won't see that as much. So every time you get to a corner, like right here, this corner, I want you to do the same thing, cut the corner out. So I'm gonna speed you up so it looks like I'm doing mine really, really fast but take your time, do it slow so you get good fringes and you can pause the video and when you're
Okay, guys. That probably took you about at least 15 minutes, maybe 20, but that's okay. Just take your time. Go slow because you don't want to mess up. Leave your bandana, when you're all done with your fringes, leave your bandanas together. And the next part is how we're going to get it to stay closed. So we'll start on this first one here. You're going to pull it up. And towards the top, this is actually, it's great that we have this pattern because it's easy to use. So fold it up so the lines are touching each other. Just one fringe at a time, not all of them. And then you're going to take your scissors and make a small slit. So just a quick cut. And then we pull it back down and you'll see your slit just like that. You're going to take the bottom and kind of pinch them. And we want to tuck it through that slit we made. And make sure you have both ends when you pull through. Just like that. And if you made your slit a little big, tuck it in again. Because this first slit I made was just a little bit big. And we can always go back and fix them at the end if they're too big, but try to keep them pretty tight. So let me do another one, see if I can make a better one. Uh, fold it up. A small hole. Oop. That hole was better. And then tuck both ends through the hole and pull them through. This is going to take you a little bit, just like the slicing did. So take your time and I will meet you back here in a couple minutes.
Okay, guys, so when you get to the last side, you're going to keep doing the knots that you've been doing, or the weaving as it's called, but you don't want to do the fourth side until you stuff it, because otherwise you're going to close off your pillow and you won't get any stuffing inside. So I'm just going to move my scissors off to the side. If you got your supplies from the library, which I know some of you did, then you would have been given some of the stuffing fluff. And when you, you take it out of the bag, you just want to like fluff it up a little. And then you're going to open the one side of your pillow and stuff it in. Now, fill it as much as you want. If you don't have enough stuffing, you could either get more at the store or you could use some cotton balls if you have cotton balls at home. They would work also. Just anything soft. If you have an old pillow that you don't like anymore, you could always use this as a pillow cover. So you can tuck the pillow inside if it fits. And then it just covers up the old pillow and makes it new. This is around the size of a decorative pillow that might come with like your bed set. So if you have one like that and you just don't like it anymore and you want to give it a new life, you can stuff it in here. And it might look a little lumpy, but as you squish it around and as you use it, it will change its shape. And you can work with it a little as you're stuffing. You don't want to overstuff because you don't want to make it so that your sides won't join up again. So for me, I think this is pretty good. I might do just a one handful more. and just play with it. You reach your arm in there and move it around so that you got equal stuffing on all the sides. Okay. So now that that is stuffed, you have to be very careful about finishing up your weaving. So just do your best to pull the fringes that match up back together, work slowly one at a time, and just get back to your weaving. So make your small slit and tuck your strands through it. And if you find as you're closing some of them that you have a gap that could fit more stuffing, that's totally fine. Just start tying them until and leave about four or five on the end. And we can always stick a little bit more stuffing in, but you don't want to overstuff it until you get most of it tied up. I, that's why I like to stop, do most of the stuffing. Stop stuffing, then tie up most of the end. And then if I think I need a little bit more, I could always go back and add more before I close up the very end.
So I'm going to stop and add just a little more stuffing because mine could use just a little bit more. And then to finish off, after you have all the stuffing you need in your pillow, and if in your bag of supplies that you got from us you didn't get enough stuffing, you can stop right here and leave that opening. You can let us know. I can give you more. Or you can grab some more at the store. And you can just leave the project until you have more stuffing. To finish up, I'm going to tie these last few in knots. Just because the fuller the stuffing is on the end, it's make, it makes it harder. So I'm just going to do two knots. So I take my strips that match up together. Do one and then cross over again to make it tight And if you think the tying is easier than the slits for this end piece, you can absolutely just do tying all the way up and down it. That's totally your call. A couple more pieces over here. And my end piece. Ooh. Now, on the side that you did the stuffing for your pillow, just check to see if there's any big gaps. And if there are, just add an extra tie. And it'll keep your stuffing in. Let's loop it around. And there you go. Let me... There is my no sew bandana pillow. I hope you had fun making your pillow. Send us pictures of your finished product and I'll see you guys at our next program. Bye!